Chapter 1, There is no hope anymore. Valley of the End, the 10th of October year 1037. The two exhausted ninja looked at each other contemplating their next moves. The two lifelong rivals were fighting out for one last time to settle all scores and both knew their next move would be the deciding one. The raven-haired ninja eyed the blonde getting up on his feet to face him again. Even after getting beaten into a pulp, the so-called, number one unpredictable knucklehead ninja, refused to give up and had pushed the last Uchiha to his very limits. His stubbornness annoyed the out of the so-called Avenger and Revolutionary and it was not that the blonde was the only one beaten into a pulp, he had beaten Sasuke into a pulp as well and even after the last Uchiha was able to steal his remaining chakra, somehow it seemed he still packed a punch. Again, 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 Sasuke yelled, why don't you just give up and let me finish you off for good? He questioned the blonde who had just punched him so strongly that he had been thrown high up into the statue of Madara Uchiha, or whatever remained of it. Naruto smiled, it was one of his real smiles. Because you are my friend, replied the Jinchuriki of Kurama. Sasuke had had it, he poured all his remaining chakra into one last attack, hoping to finish the annoying blonde for good. Lightning engulfed his hand along with black flames and he prepared to jump down. Be careful he intends to finish you off with one last attack. Warned Kurama, the greatest biju from inside Naruto's mind, in front of him there stood his trusted Jinchuriki, calm and collected unlike his loud and boisterous self. He didn't reply a word. I will give you the last of the chakra I have and then I will go into a slumber for some time. Don't use your chakra till the last moment then. The great nine-tailed fox was suddenly silenced by the raised fist from his favorite blonde. He had a swollen blue eye, his jumpsuit had been torn into shreds leaving a rather messed up mesh shirt covering his skin. The blonde flashed one of his real smiles at his trusted companion. Wordlessly Kurama bumped his paw with his partner and transferred the last of the chakra he had accumulated. The blonde started walking away from the mindscape to prepare his final attack. The fox looked at him one last time before dozing off and smirked, already sure that this boy would soon change the world. Sasuke jumped down, his hand engulfed with lightning along with the black flames of a Amaterasu his target set at Naruto's heart. Naruto jumped up with all his might towards Sasuke with a look of determination. The situation couldn't have been more ironic, the usually calm, collected and patient Sasuke was screaming impatiently for Naruto's blood whereas the usually loud and boisterous Naruto was calm, determined and collected. Naruto following Kurama's advice, held on patiently till the last moment and started accumulating and rotating all his remaining chakra on his right hand. He usually had to rely on a shadow clone to make a, Rasengan, However he had been able to do it single-handedly since quite some time without even realizing, however at this moment he realized he was able to make the swirling sphere of chakra without assistance even in his base form without sage mode or Kurama's chakra. He also felt as if hands of all his precious people were waving over the sphere as if lending him their power. Finally Naruto yelled as soon as the Rasengan was completed and brought his palm forward aimed straight for Sasuke's attack. The two lifelong rivals met head on mid-air and their attacks collided with full force and started fighting for domination as both ninja tried to push forward with all their might, chakra of both the attacks combined. And exploded engulfing the whole area in a huge and very bright explosion and then for Naruto and Sasuke, everything went dark. A day later, Sasuke was able to see through Naruto's memories and his feelings and finally realized how much pain he has caused his rival turned brother figure in his quest for power, revenge and revolution. Naruto had admitted last night, when both of them had briefly regained consciousness that he felt the pain when he saw Sasuke suffering all alone. The blonde had claimed that he was nervous that the genius Uchiha would accept him as a friend so he proclaimed himself as his lifelong rival. Sasuke finally admitted that he also felt Naruto's pain when he saw the latter suffering alone. The blonde even after all his suffering forged his path ahead, inspiring others around him and that Naruto despite all his failings continued to walk ahead of him just like his late elder brother used to. Finally morning came and Naruto and Sasuke were awoken from their slumber. Is it really heaven this time? Naruto asked in a low and pained voice. We are still alive, we just dozed off. Looks like we failed to die again, commented Sasuke obviously in a lot of pain. Neither could move their body an inch and both realized that they were rapidly losing strength. My body won't move an inch. I was really hoping to punch you hard and beat the sense into you. The blonde replied. Sasuke started to chuckle, confusing the out of the blonde. What is it? Naruto asked irritated. We're messed up like this and you still want to fight? Sasuke asked chuckling, the pain was still evident in his voice. All right I admit it, I, lost. Sasuke declared with a satisfied smile. What? Naruto exclaimed. It's not about winning or losing it's about beating sense into a friend. The real fight comes after that, Naruto ranted. 
The blonde might have continued his rant but Sasuke cut him off. Naruto. What? I just acknowledged you. Quote ellipsis quote. If I die right here, the cycle of hatred would end, that would be a revolution as well. Hey, I should put an end to myself here, you can then implant my Rinnegan in Kakashi and dispel the infinite Tsukuyomi. Sasuke if you really are prepared to die, you should help me bring peace in the world when I become Hokage, Naruto commented. Although I don't really think I'll last that long, he thought to himself. Do you really want that Naruto? The last Uchiha asked, of course I will be glad to have you as my right hand man when I become Hokage. Suddenly Sasuke started coughing and his pain became unbearable, his eyelids started becoming heavier and his vision began to blur. Naruto, I don't think I can last any longer, I am, sorry. What are you saying Tem, don't you dare die on me, Naruto yelled with all his remaining strength. I, I have really, failed you as a friend and brother Naruto and I, I can't even live anymore to fix it up. Dobi, Sasuke said and coughed again. My vision is fading and I can sense that I have lost almost all my chakra, I can't go on Naruto, I am sorry. The Uchiha apologized again. Tem don't you dare, Naruto whispered too weak to yell now. I, I don't even have the chakra, to dispel the infinite Tsukuyomi, Sasuke said as his breathing became more and more difficult and longer. The, only thing I can do with, my remaining, chakra is to, free the biju. Saying this Sasuke focused all his remaining chakra, Chibaku Tensai, release, he whispered the words out. Naruto could hear a rumble at a distance. Naruto, there's one last thing I will tell you as a brother. What is it Sasuke, the blonde asked too weak to express any emotions. When you free them all, give Hinata Hayuga a chance, that girl has really loved you for as long as. I can remember. Naruto only sighed in response. I will, I promise Sasuke, if I get out of this I will, become hers. I promise. The Jinchuriki whispered. If not in this life, then definitely in the next. Naruto thought to himself. Naruto, please tell Sakura and Kakashi Sensei that I was sorry. Naruto closed his eyes and some tears fell. In the end I failed you Nisan. Sasuke whispered, now too weak to keep his eyes open. Sorry for everything, brother, Sasuke whispered to Naruto for one last time and fell silent. Seconds later his breathing stopped. Sasuke, Sasuke, Naruto whispered and didn't get a reply. It's Sasuke, it, it was too soon for you Tem, did I really fail? Naruto sighed again and closed his eyes. He also found that breathing was becoming more and more difficult for him and his own vision was beginning to blur as well. No not like this not yet it I can't die here. I am yet to become Hokage. I am yet to, accept Hinata-chan's confession, she's waiting for me, it. Don't give up my body it. Naruto mentally cursed himself but soon realized he won't last much longer whatever he did. He could hear some footsteps, perhaps the biju were rushing towards him he was sure they won't make it in time. Kurama. The blonde went into his mindscape and called his partner. He found the fox trying to accumulate chakra instead of sleeping, probably to stop his blood loss. It kit don't give up yet I am trying to gather chakra to stop your bleeding hang on. I am trying to hang on Kurama, dot but it seems I can't anymore my strength is leaving me and I am feeling cold. You Gaki, you are stronger than this. Sorry Kurama, I don't think I can last much longer. I just wish I could be with Hinata-chan now. Kurama, you don't need to die with me, go and join with your other half and figure out a way to free those people. Naruto, it's okay Kurama, just promise me that you will protect Hinata-chan for me. We will protect her together just hold on a little longer kit. Sorry Kurama but this is it for me, the Tem really did a number on me this time. I am really glad to have been your friend and partner Kurama, I just wish we could have had some more time together but this is really it, please protect Hinata-chan for me. Now go, it's my last request. Suddenly red chakra started leaking from Naruto's body and after some moments it took the form of a giant nine-tailed fox. The Kayubi looked at Naruto solemnly. The blonde lay down with his eyes closed. I now remember that day when Uruka sensei asked us, who is the person we want to spend our last day with? I didn't know the answer back then. But now, I know for sure, it's you Hinata-chan, only you. I am sorry that I have been such an idiot. I really should have given myself to you long ago but, it's really appropriate for me to die here without you by my side when I finally know that I want to be with you. I promise in my next life, I will be yours and yours only. Naruto thought, some tears fell from his eyes. Gradually his breathing became slower and slower until it finally stopped. Kurama could only look at the still body of his partner. He closed his eyes. A tear fell down. The nine-tailed fox had cried once when his father, the legendary sage of the six paths had died. Now he was crying again when the only human he had come to trust and respect died before him. 
Some minutes later, the nine-tailed beasts, Shukaku, Matabi, Isobu, Sun Goku, Kokuo, Saiken, Chome, Yuki and the young half of Kurama came running to the spot, where the Yin Kurama was sitting, looking at the dead body of his host. Is it? Sun Goku asked in shock. It can't be, commented Kokuo. It, said Yuki. Yes, all hope is now. Lost, commented the Yin Kurama, placing his nail softly on Naruto's head and closing his eyes again. All the biju had come to respect the boy, they sat in silence. What happened to those two humans, the kid's teammates, asked Yin Kurama. The pink-haired girl was knocked out I would guess a genjutsu of some sort. The silver-haired one was waiting for her to recover. They might be on their way here, Matabi commented. Yin Kurama looked at his young counterpart. Naruto let me out before passing and asked me to merge with you and figure out a way to stop the infinite Tsukuyomi. Sorry, other half, but with these two gone, I don't think we have any way of dispelling that wretched jutsu. Even if we combine our chakra, we still require a Rinnegan. There was some hope for us when that Kakashi had a Sharingan but now even he no longer has one, Yonkarama replied. However, the yin half still folded his paws and guided his chakra into the yang half. A minute later, both halves of the Kayubi were merged and the fox was finally restored to its original size. Is there really no way to stop that wretched jutsu, asked Saiken. If there was, I would have already done it. I fully intend to keep my kid's final wish and protect that Hayuga girl with everything I got, replied Kurama. All his efforts to hide his sadness and frustration were failing. Wait, there is a way, the Aikibi, Shukaku exclaimed. He had been uncharacteristically silent till that moment. Which is, asked Kokuo. Don't you guys remember the jutsu the old man taught us before he passed? The one which he said to use if all hope is lost, replied Shukaku, every biju raised an eyebrow as soon as they realized what the Aikibi was hinting at. I'm in for it if we do it, we will get our guardian back, commented Son Goku hopeful at the prospect of getting everything right again. It does seem there is no other way with the boy gone. I'm in, said Matabi. Let's do this my luck will never fail us, said Chome, the lucky seven. I'm ready, said Kokuo. Guess I gotta be ready for some more raps. Let's do this said Yuki. I'm in, said Saiken. Isobu held off and for a moment before speaking quietly, if we take this option, what will become of this world, the one we shall be leaving? And who's to say that we can even make a difference? The other eight biju went silent and looked around at each other, unsure of what to say. Yuki cut the silence, honestly, I don't think this world is even worth thinking about. It's doomed to eternal slumber or outright erasure. Maybe we could try and wake up the world on our own but we would be spending possible decades on a world that may not even exist soon. Who knows if any Otsutsuki are on their way to take advantage of this chaos. Kurama followed up. This world can dream away for eternity or be erased but either way we have failed here. It is time to start over and the only way we get a second chance is by taking that leap. I don't know if we can change things, but we need to have faith that we can fix this. Have faith in the ones we care about and have faith in our guardian to pull through, Kurama trailed off as he thought about the now deceased Naruto. Isobu stared before sighing, you're right, we owe it to everyone we failed before today and everyone we failed just now to finish this as it was supposed to be, not let it end on such a sour and unfulfilling note. I guess another decade or two with Yagura trapped in a genjutsu might be worth it. I'm in, said Isobu. Kurama looked at Naruto's still body again and placed his claw on the boy's head one last time. I told you we'll protect your vixen together kit, and now we will. Get ready everyone. With that Kurama extended his paw towards his siblings. Just to let you know Kurama, your role will be the most important one in this, be careful, cautioned Matabi. Disc, I know what to do now, trust me I do. Every biju then placed their paw on top of Kurama's and started focusing their chakra. A large intricate seal appeared beneath them and started to glow. The concentration of the huge amount of chakra from all nine biju sent shockwaves in every direction. N-I-N-S-H-U-U. Time reversal exclaimed all the tailed beasts in unison. Then they were all engulfed in a very bright light beam shooting towards the sky, moments later the beam vanished along with the biju as if they were never there. Chapter 2, Round 2 begins. Matabi knew something was wrong and yet right, so confusing. Like something horrible happened and the memories of things that could not be true began invading her mind. I surrounded her within Yugito's mindscape and soon when the monster cat became visible again, she was slightly bigger. The two selves had merged. Matabi remembered everything, the horrors of the ghetto Mazo's stomach and being part of Jubi and Kegaya. Yugito's death by the hands of Hidan and Kakuzu, indirectly through capturing her, stuck with the Nibi. Preventing that from happening was her highest priority. 
The easiest way would be to just go ahead and tell Yugito and work towards convincing her of the horrible future that hopefully could be averted. But Matabi had other ideas. So good to be back in a familiar place, especially after my sudden eviction and imprisonment. We have plenty of time to change things. M E O O O O O O O W W W W O O W W W W W O O O O W W A A A A U U U U U. The Nibi meowed, then yawned, curled up and went to sleep. Really helping with the Biju animal appearance behavior stereotype there. Son Goku didn't really have much trouble assimilating his past self. His boast of being a sage didn't lack merit. When the Yandi of the past felt something happening and sensed the six path chakra at play, he just sat there and waited to see what happened. Deep down, he had a pretty good idea of what was going on and knew that the other Biju were experiencing similar things at this moment. Wonder how bad things got if we had to resort this. The gorilla wondered as his consciousness faded into the future Son Goku's own. When the light shone and then died down, the gorilla emerged slightly larger and the with mind and memories of the Goku from over 10 years later. Oi, Roshi, I know you can hear me. We need to talk. What do you want now Yanbi? I traveled back in time from a decade from now to try to save you and that's how you thank me. I should have let you rot in the world sleep. Goku yelled furiously, and then realized that he let a few too many details slip out too quickly. W what? Roshi gasped out after realizing what his tenant had said. Goku facepalmed and sighed, like I said, we need to talk. Out of all the biju, Kokuo could sense something was happening. She could sense six path chakra at play. Six path chakra last showed up over a decade ago and vanished almost entirely soon after, relatively speaking. The Gobi still held fear that the brief shimmer from those years ago meant something had changed, or even something had been freed from imprisonment. Something like the ghetto Mazo. So, when the light shone down and the dolphin horse emerged slightly larger and with the memories of the future, it took a moment for her to get her bearings. Han, we need to talk, Kokuo politely tried to get her Jinchuriki's attention. Nothing, Han, Kokuo tried again. Still nothing, are you ignoring me? Kokuo accused in a moment of stress from having escaped the eternally sleeping world which she hoped to have ceased to exist entirely. Humanity deserved better than to be. Trapped in sleep for eternity, dreaming of gaining everything they wanted but many would likely come to realize how hollow it was without the struggle. I'm trying to enjoy my tea, it's not very often when I can enjoy a nice cup of tea without any humans trying to me off or I would doing a good job of making me consider going missing nin. Whatever you have to say can wait till after I'm done. Your obsession with hot leaf juice astounds me. How could you say something so horrible about tea? Han asked sounding sincerely offended and demanding an answer. Kokuo face palmed with her hoof. This is going to be a long day, ah. Chomei was trying not to wake up Fu with the assimilating occurring. Once the now slightly larger Chomei had regained his bearing, he tried to get the Nanabi Jinchuriki's attention. Only to realize that she was peacefully dreaming away in her sleep. Chomei let her sleep. Yuki knew he was going to be walking into more of B's rapping when he agreed to this idea. Cheesy as they were, B could definitely put together at least something catchy. Especially when he was dissing someone. So the first thing he happened to hear upon regaining awareness in the past was be writing his lyrics. Ya know my swords, my awards, hidden chords, eight sword style from the hills to the fjords. Yeah, like the sound of that. B smirked as he began scribbling into his notebook in the section labeled, Keepers. B. Not now, 8-0. Oh. The killer is on a roll, yo. That was going to be defining a lot of conversations Yuki tried to start. Now not every biju arrived to find things calm. Shukaku arrived and laughed, he he he. Can't say I like being in this awful seal again but it beats being in that up situation and it already tells me where I arrived. Now oh no. Shukaku declared bombastically before backpedaling when he heard a voice speaking. Love only yourself, because that's the only one who will love you. Boom Shukaku had arrived at the time of Yashumaru's attack on Gara. Gara's sobbing gradually began to turn to enraged and pained howls as Shukaku, uncharacteristically, nervously tried to reach out. Hey kid, I know it hurts but, ah, uh, maybe he was lying. G G G G R R R R A A A A H H H H H H H H H. Gara yelled as Shukaku felt his power begin being pulled en masse through the already fragile opening of the seal. And oh, no, I'm trying to help damn it. This ruined your life last time and you're about to up before I can help. Come on Chakra, stay in your house. Don't leave daddy. Shukaku screamed in a fit of hysterical mania. He managed to resist Gara's pull and a minute later, Gara calmed down. Phew, had me worried their kid. I could use a drink after that, wonder how I can get one in he, and then Shukaku noticed Rasa in Gara's line of sight, smirking smugly, 
You know what, never mind about that drink. Oh me. Isobu arrived into no surprise, he was in Yagura as he was trapped in the genjutsu that Tobi controlled him with for years. Fan friggantastic, wonder how this will end. Akatsuki taking Yagura for me, may defeating Yagura again and imprisoning him again before a botched retrieval attempt kills Yagura and sets me free to get grabbed by Didera and Tobi after that boy who could control my chakra gets spirited away by his caretakers, or perhaps I might actually save my friend. Isobu asked cynically, to no one, the sandy side and stretched. Damn it, Kurama and that boy of his got to me, well, I spent over a decade in this illusion before, maybe I can use this time to further my understanding and possibly break it. Or at least erode part of it. Isobu began stretching his metaphorical feelers out into Yugura's network and began analyzing the genjutsu, I wonder if Tobi came up with this himself or if he got the idea from elsewhere. It looks like it is only truly controlling Yugura at times, the rest it seems to be clouding his moral compass and exacerbating certain emotions, this might take years to break. Saiken arrived in his seal and noticed something unspeakable. It was dirty. Kurama often compared the Rokubi to cockroaches with his obsession with keeping his living area clean. That nothing could be as obsessed with room cleaning as Saiken in another universe, where people used bending, rather than chakra to manipulate the elements. A young girl named Kiyoshi cleaning for her master and friend. The young, avatar, Yun, sneezed before she could cover her mouth and sneezed on Yun's Paisho set. Completely unaware of the blast of wind that emerged from her mouth and blasted a piece away alongside the small tongue of flames that didn't sear any of the pieces. The girl grumbled before going back to work and cleaning the game set and setting it back to a neutral configuration. How his past self could allow this filthy perversion of their living space, Saiken was unsure but the sea slug began moving to rectify this. At first, he tried to simply wet it and scrub it. That however did not work. So, the biju tried something else. He produced a white bubble foam and sprayed it on the dirt spots, let it sit for a while and then scrubbed which finally broke down the dirt and rinsed off. Now that that's done, Yudakata, can you hear me? We need to tea, Saiken started before stopping and realizing something was happening, the seal was unraveling. Are you kidding me? Yudakata's master is trying to extract me happened years later. Darn it. The biju arrived throughout the same day some to favorable circumstances, others to decidedly unfavorable ones, and one to the consequence of messing with time in the first place, the butterfly effect, taking hold in front of them. But one shall arrive to fulfill a promise, in time. Kanahagakur no Sato, the village hidden in the leaves, December 6, 1027. A pale-eyed girl was being forced to kneel and apologize by three boys who seemed to be a year or two older than her. The girl began to sob and apologized again, but the boys were not satisfied. Apologize again yelled one of the three bullies. I I A A M S S S O R I Y, the pale-eyed girl pleaded sobbing. Hey, what are you doing, yelled a short blonde-haired boy, wrapped in a red scarf. Leave her alone, he yelled to the three bullies. Huh, and who the are you? I am Uzumaki Naruto, I will be Hokage one day Dadbeo, the blonde yelled. The three looked at him for a moment and then burst out laughing. You, the Hokage, what a joke. Shut up or I will beat you up with my awesome jutsu, yelled the blonde with his hands in a cross sign. Unbeknownst to any of the people present at that time, the blonde had a very powerful creature sealed in his gut, the young half of the legendary nine-tailed fox. At that moment, suddenly the fox inside the seal was engulfed in a bright white light and grew to double his size, as the light faded, the mighty Kurama smirked in victory. Ten years back in time, right at the point when the Gaki met his vixen, this will be fun. Oi, Naruto. Naruto, the fox tried to get the attention of his Jinchuriki, only to get nothing in response. Quote exclamation mark, looks like I can't talk to the kid, the seal is blocking me from establishing a connection outside the mindscape, even with my other half restored. TCH, means I'm going to have to play the long game here. That doesn't mean those three are going to get away again. No one gets away insulting the nine-tailed fox ever, let alone twice. By that time Naruto's attempt at the clone jutsu had failed and after he had beaten up one of the bullies catching him off guard, the other two were in the process beating the out of him. Suddenly the blonde felt a surge of strength in his muscles, and to his surprise he was able to push one of them off himself. The blonde then punched the other one still holding on to him right on his face, causing him to lose a tooth. He then proceeded to beat the out of him. Told ya I would beat you up. Never underestimate Uzumaki Naruto. Dad Bayo yelled the blonde in victory as other two bullies seeing that the blonde was obviously stronger than them and ran away. A-A-R-E-Y-U-O-O-K-K, asked the pale-eyed girl. Yeah, that was nothing at all. Are you okay? asked Naruto in a kind voice. H-ha-i. B but your s-ska-arf, I it's ruined. 
It's okay, by the way what's your name? H-H-U-U-G-A-H-H Hanada. Hanada huh? That's a nice name, so where do you live? It's getting dark so I'll walk you home. The blonde offered his hand with a grin. Hanada nodded and Naruto took her hand. The two walked away and minutes later, found themselves outside the Hyuga compound. Hanada suddenly remembered why she had run away in the first place, she had lost in a spar with her cousin and her father had called her a failure. She started to sob again. Hey, why are you crying? Asked Naruto concerned. I I, hey, you live in such a huge place and you are crying. I don't have anyone but I don't cry. So, cheer up a bit, said Naruto, trying to comfort the girl. Hanada found his words reassuring and collected herself, wiping her tears away. H H hi, that's good, so now that you're home go get some rest and take care. See ya around Hanada, saying that the blonde ran away waving his hand. Hmm, this went a little better than last time, said the fox to itself. Six years later, to Kurama's frustration he couldn't make any improvements in Naruto's life or strengthen him. The only thing he did was better his chakra control. In the previous timeline, in order to make Naruto more dependent on him, Kurama knowingly messed up the blonde's chakra control by sending large bursts of chakra into his chakra network which made the blonde's chakra network unbalanced. However, this time, Kurama let out a steady flow of chakra into the blonde's chakra network, which the fox believed would make the chakra network more balanced. However, he couldn't verify the theory until the blonde attempted the tree walking exercise. The fox was yet to speak to his host. He had figured out that he wouldn't be meeting the boy till Jiraiya threw him off the cliff. Due to the fox strengthening his chakra, Naruto was made physically stronger. Still, the academy instructors, especially Mizuki had knowingly given him wrong taijutsu instructions, due to which the blonde's performance in hand-to-hand -hand remained rather poor. To his further annoyance, the blonde had remained a loudmouthed fool just like the previous timeline. He was poor in academics, taijutsu, he still couldn't perform the clone jutsu. He had again made himself the self-proclaimed rival of the last Uchiha. He was again having a one-sided crush on Sakura and had gotten a lot of punches to his head after asking to pink it out. Of all the things, the blonde's obsession with Sakura had annoyed the Kyubi the most. Even after being stuck inside Naruto's gut for 17 years in the original timeline and 6 in the new one, Kurama couldn't still figure out why the blonde had a crush on perhaps the loudest fangirl of Sasuke Uchiha. Kurama even believed that the growth of Naruto's brain had been slowed down from Naruto being repeatedly punched in head by Sakura. The blonde's obliviousness to Hinata's affection for him did not help with the fox's frustrations either. The fox was eager to bring the two together. In short, the whole time travel thing was yet to make any positive contributions towards making this timeline better than the original one, in what Kurama could influence and was hoping to accomplish. Finally, Naruto had graduated the way he did in the previous timeline by beating the out of Mizuki using the Shadow Clone Jutsu. Due to being fed a steady supply of the fox's chakra, Naruto's clones were slightly more durable than last time, however nobody had noticed this slight difference. Just like the previous timeline, Naruto was placed in Team 7 with the same teammates. Kurama repeatedly facepalmed upon knowing that he and his host would have to be in the constant company of the loudmouthed fangirl and the arrogant emo Uchiha. The wave mission went the same way it did last time. Kurama actually wanted to save Haku, Naruto's memories painted a picture of a boy who Kurama found could be an exemplary example of what the sage envisioned for humanity when he created Ninshu. However, due not being in touch with Naruto, he couldn't affect Naruto's actions. After the wave mission, the Chunin exams went exactly the same way they did last time, all the way till the preliminaries. Naruto was slammed by the five-point seal, effectively stopping Kurama from supplying chakra into Naruto's system. Naruto eventually defeated Kiba, who was superior to him in speed and taijutsu, by thinking outside the box. He again vowed vengeance upon Neji on Hinata's blood. And finally, the blonde had ended up with Jiraiya at the valley where he was to meet Kurama eventually. The fox was rather impatient to meet Naruto this time around. Gaki you need to chakra from your other chakra source to perform summoning correctly, commented Jiraiya. How do I draw chakra from the damned fox arrow Senen? When have you been able to access the fox's chakra previously? The blonde placed his finger on his chin and thought for a moment and replied. When I was fighting Haku, I thought he'd killed Sasuke and then I went on a rampage perhaps then I subconsciously drew upon the fox's chakra. Maybe when he's angry or desperate he can use the fox's chakra. And if the Gaki were face to face with death, the fox would share its chakra with him at least for his own survival. After that, just like last time, Jiraiya pushed Naruto off the cliff. 
Ah, screamed the blonde plummeting towards the bottom of the crater a a a a n n n n d d d d finally to Kurama's tremendous relief, Naruto ended up in his mindscape. Huh, where am I, is this what heaven looks like, the blonde thought out loud. You're not dead yet Gaki, said Kurama as loud as possible to draw the blonde towards himself to finally have a long overdue conversation with him. Naruto found himself in what resembled a rather dark gutter with he found himself walking on water. He tried to follow the fox's voice and ended up before Kurama's cage. Show yourself whoever's in here. Then he saw a red eye open up inside the dark cage. Naruto gulped. Then slowly he saw the full form of a great fox, hundreds of stories tall, with nine massive tails swinging in random directions. Uzumaki Naruto, I have been waiting for a long time to have a chat with you. Huh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Naruto counted Kurama's tails, completely forgetting that he was currently plummeting towards his death. You are the fox that made my life. Shut up, I did not ask to be sealed inside you. But, I am willing to work with you show better show some respect. Exclaimed Kurama, remembering how loud and annoying Naruto can be at times. Gaki, I know that you're currently plummeting towards your death and I will give you my chakra so that you can use that. Summoning jutsu of yours, huh? Naruto was surprised, the fox seemed rather cooperative. Definitely hot-headed but cooperative, much like himself. Um, thanks, UUHH, Kayubi. I have a name it's Kurama and I don't like being called Kayubi. How would you like it if I called you whiskers or blonda all the time? Okay, okay, thanks, Kurama. Hmm, but promise me that you'll come back here tonight, you and I need to have a chat that is long overdue. You got it Kurama, see ya tonight. The blonde went away from his mindscape and successfully summoned Gamabunta using the boost of Chakra Kurama provided. Finally, we meet again, I hate to admit it but it's good to see you alive and kicking. I really missed you kid, thought Kurama and prepared himself to finally take his first serious step towards changing the future for the better. Chapter 3, Realizations and Conversations. Hmm, so how do I go to wherever Kurama is? I forgot to ask him da. Naruto murmured to himself in his bedroom. After successfully summoning Gamabunta, Jiraiya had given the blonde a day off owing to his exhaustion. He just wants get away from me to keep peeping on women. Aero Senen in his damned research, Naruto thought to himself and quite correctly so. In the meantime, he was confused. He was angry, really angry at Neji for harming Hinata. But he didn't yet understand why he was so protective of Hinata. During her match with Neji, the blonde had cheered for her and was amazed by her resolve to stand up again and again. Sakura had told him that the Hyuga might have been inspired by him. To say that Naruto was surprised by this was an understatement. He was blown away with that fact. I used to think that Hinata is all shy and weird but that day, that match showed that how ignorant I am. She's really amazing. Every time he thought about Hinata, he felt a very warm sensation in his heart. What is this feeling? I know Hinata-chan is amazing but why do I feel so warm when I think about her? I don't feel like this when I think about Sakura-chan or anyone else. Then he thought back the Hyuga heiress's words just before she lost consciousness. D did I, did I change na Naruto kun That's what you said before you passed out. Well certainly you changed the way I see you. Before, I hardly knew anything about you. You stuttered, turned red and fainted whenever you were around me but now that I know you're amazing, really strong, and after taking a good look at you, turns out you're really cute and beautiful. Even calling you Hinata-chan feels more right than calling Sakura Sakura-chan. The blonde stopped dead in his mental when realization started hitting him. Do I, did I just think that I may be? Dot but will she even, ah. Oh. She's the Hyuga heiress, she's like a princess, how could she even like someone like me? I don't think even if I try my best she'll look at me like that. What am I thinking? I should just know my own limits, future Hokage or not this is just aiming too high. The blonde sighed. However, inside his cage Kurama was very satisfied. Looks like traveling back in time was worth it after all. Maybe keeping a steady chakra flow into his system instead of sending bursts after bursts of it not just helped with chakra control and physical strength, it strengthened him mentally even if only a little bit. Last time he didn't think much about that vixen of his at this point. He only started thinking about her after she confessed and finally, on his last breaths did he realize that he thought about her in a romantic way even though he did that subconsciously for a long, long time. Hmm, this time maybe hooking those two would be easier and then the other serious tasks, the damn seal doesn't let me contact with Shukaku, even if he and his Jinchuriki are in the village, just a few kilometers away, the channel is just too hazy, and I may have been napping at inopportune times, come to think of it, I wonder how well some of my siblings have been doing. Flashback the year of the future Biju's arrival. 
Han and Roshi sat at a tea shop, contemplating the information that had been shared with them by their now older tenants well, suddenly older by a decade tenants. It's crazy, just absolutely insane. The red-headed old man mumbled. Han sipped the tea and nodded, only missing his cloth mask and steam engine but otherwise dressed in his armor. Indeed. And the fact that we even believe this time travel nonsense is not just not sane in the slightest, but we should be discharged and institutionalized, Roshi kept on mumbling. Han hummed along. But then Roshi's gaze turned distant, but everything Goku and Kokuo said makes absolute sense. I could see myself going down to Kisame, I'd give the shark a good thrashing and scar that sword of his for the rest of its days, but I don't think I could win a war of attrition, not without unleashing Goku. And my fate I could see happening as well. Han added. But what do we do with what we know? Lay down, or fight? Roshi shook his head. You and I both know it's not the shinobi way to give up and die. We fight on and endure no matter the path ahead. Han smiled. Agreed. I suppose it might be beneficial to stay with Iwa for the time being. As much as I hate it, experience with the ninja here and other things makes this area a good place for a final stand. Roshi nodded, and there's a good dormant volcano nearby for me and Goku's lava techniques. Worst comes to worst, we blow it and take out the land of Earth but drag those Akatsuki down with us. Han chuckled slightly, even in old age you lack restraint. Roshi mockingly scowled. Oi. I'm not that old. I was planning on taking on a team of promising youngsters soon, give Iowa a good shot for this fourth great ninja war. Han stared with an eyebrow raised. Words like youngsters does not imply youth but rather a lack of it, Roshi. Roshi dropped the facade and shrugged. Perhaps, though my future team of pupils does strike me as rather promising. Just wish that the youngest of them wasn't so art obsessed. Han chuckled again. I can't decide who I pity more in that arrangement. Onoki always managed to get you into these kinds of situations. Any luck convincing him to ally with Konoha? Roshi sighed. None. He's set in his ways and he's traumatized from Madara's visit to the village during that negotiation back when me and him were still genin. Han shook his head. A shame. I believe this Uzumaki Naruto would have been interesting to meet, if for nothing else to see how he measures up to Goku and Kokuo's praise. I'm more shocked that there's still an Uzumaki going by the name, Uzumaki, out there and making waves with that name. Last one of those was, Nagato wasn't it, apart from Konoha's former first lady that is. Roshi inquired. Han nodded in affirmation after a moment, I believe so, he was part of the Akatsuki movement in AIM. Heard he possessed a powerful dojutsu and that Danzo and Hanzo both tried taking him and the movement down. I wonder if there's a connection between the Akatsuki movement and the Akatsuki mercenary group. Or one between Naruto and Nagato. Roshi stroked his beard in contemplation, the Akatsuki connection, I have no doubt of. Too much would make sense. Especially if this, Han was Nagato. But that would make his dojutsu the Rinnegan, and few would be able to fight back against that. The Naruto and Nagato connection is quite a bit vaguer but I remember Jiraiya's first book being dedicated to an Uzumaki. Nagato, with the main character being his given name corrupted into Naruto. So Jiraiya-san would be the connection? Han asked. Most likely. In the editions that mentioned Nagato the most, it was the earliest one, Jiraiya expressed absolute belief that Nagato would change the world. A kid with the Rinnegan would be quite the thing to place that kind of faith in, and with the legends regarding those eyes power it would make sense he had that kind of expectation. Roshi exposited. But it would seem that Nagato has forsaken such aspirations, Han started. Or has gone about taking a bloodier path to it. One that made him into pain, the man leading Akatsuki. Roshi finished. Han sighed, this isn't going to be easy, changing fate. But most things worth aspiring to hardly ever are. Roshi smirked. I couldn't have said it better, Han. Modern day Kumo. Ten days ago, I'm telling ya bro, Konoha would be a good fit for us. Help get Kumo out of that funk we've been in. He spoke while Yugito watched flatly. I wish I could be riling up Omoi, Karui and Samui. It's so funny. Would beat these two arguing. B, for the last time, we are not in a funk. Business has been slowing for a while. We've had more years of peace now than we got between the second and third wars. People are starting to think that the continent-wide Cold War might finally be wrapping up. Ah, the rakage, complained. And how did Kumo's business slowing down start? Yugito cut in. The Hyuga affair. I sighed out. The Hyuga affair had been an albatross around the hidden village's neck for almost a decade. Perhaps in a few years, it would stop actively affecting Kumo's international mission bring in. The mission was a mistake from the start, but some in power wanted to have Kumo claim the glory of stealing the all-seeing by Akugan. 
The mission showed just how little the Lightning Daimyo knew about ninja operations and I finally got the authority to override further mission orders for similar missions, but only after the mess was over. Thankfully, his similar missions had been ordered over the years. No telling where Kumo's international revenue would be at if I had been forced to follow through on them. B and Yugito had been pushing I to work towards mending the rift between Kumo and Konoha for years but they had been especially adamant about going through with it ever since the Konoha Chunin exams had been announced. The benefits to such an alliance were slowly becoming more appealing to I. The possibilities were appealing with the possibility of getting cadet branches to Konoha clans established and Kumo being a good means of convincing the more power-hungry lightning officials to agree. I sighed, and how do you propose we get negotiations opened? It's too late to send a team, the exams are about to start and the deadline to register foreign teams passed yesterday. Yugito shrugged, why not just organize a visit during the third exam? The exams are used for politics anyways. You would be the one to suggest simply cutting the knot rather than untying it. I know Matabi. I'm trying to help that Naruto kid. If his fate is what you and Yuki say it is, then we need to ensure we can get him to the Turtle Island. B added, yeah, bro. Organize a visit and get things cool between Konoha and Kumo. Get things right and apologize for that mess. I stood silent for a minute, I'll think about it. B and Yugito smiled internally and shared a sentiment, score. Perfect. Back with Naruto and Kurama in the present. Come on Naruto get here quickly we have a lot to discuss. Thought Kurama while he waited for the blonde to appear before him. Meanwhile Naruto decided to focus on talking to his tenant for the time being and tried to focus on. The seal and the fox while closing his eyes. He had watched Jiraiya meditating earlier when he was playing around with the summoning jutsu and perfecting his water walking. Upon asking him about it, the toad sage revealed that it helped him clear his mind and focus. So, the blonde decided to try it out this time and indeed while trying to focus on the fox, he felt a pull inside his mind and in a fraction of a second found himself standing before the fox's cage. Um, you in here. Kurama, the blonde asked quietly, he didn't really want the gigantic fox to yell at him for being loud. He calls me loud but I can bet he is a million times louder than me and scary as. You do realize that we shared this mindscape and I can read your thoughts. Naruto was suddenly snapped into attention as Kurama was now standing before him grinning. Stop staring me like that creepy fox, Naruto yelled only for the fox to widen his grin. Kurama didn't get many opportunities to tease his partner as they finally made friends in the midst of a war. So, this time he didn't plan on passing up any opportunity to tease the blonde. I also know what you are thinking about making that Hyuga girl your mate, good choice by the way, far better than that loudmouth Pinkett. Naruto couldn't help blush, shut up Baka Kitsune, stop intruding into my mind, Naruto yelled again but this time with a blush. The fox was forcing him to admit that he had started to like the shy Hyuga romantically. Anyways I am sure you didn't call me here to just tease me so what is it that you want to talk about, asked Naruto hoping to change the topic. I was actually hoping to train you so that you became stronger. I am tired of seeing my container being looked down upon and called an idiot. So, you don't think of me as an idiot, like the others do, Naruto asked. I did see how you outsmarted that Inazuka boy using his own strength against him. You fought him and won when you were handicapped by that 5 point seal that the snake used on you. So yeah, you may be loudmouthed and annoying, Naruto groaned at that but you're not an idiot. However, if you had continued obsessing over that pinky I would have believed that you really are stupid. Hey, what's wrong with Sakura-chan? She's pretty, smart and... She doesn't think about any other boy other than that Uchiha brat. I bet she'll notice me when I finally prove myself to be better than Sasuke Tem. So, you think of her as some sort of trophy, the Kayubi growled making Naruto flinch. I really don't like those who treat girls like trophies, besides she doesn't acknowledge you for who you are likely never will for a long time. So maybe when she sees me for who I am, I might have a chance, Naruto asked giving a grin, a false one. Absolutely not. Besides you just realized that you like that Hyuga chick more than that pinky so it's better you stop lying to yourself. Besides I never understood the reason of your obsession with her in the first place. Because I wanted to be cheered up by her like she always cheered for Sasuke and I wanted to be called cool like she calls Sasuke. That's why I thought if I beat the Tem someday she and the other girls would call me cool and all. Kurama sighed. Gaki, it's far better for you to find someone that loves you for who you are. Thinking back, I guess that Hyuga girl you are thinking so much about nowadays never drooled over that Uchiha brat like he's some. Hinata-chan is almost royalty in this village. I doubt she'll ever accept if I ask her out and I don't know why but I am afraid that I won't be able to take a rejection from her. She's really nice and if she stops being friends for that then. 
you need to find out more about her. Your nervousness also shows that you really want to spend time with her. Anyways, now back to your training. Before we discuss the details of your training, I want you to tell me what you think of me. I can sense if you're lying or not so be totally honest. Well, I know that you attacked the village 13 years ago. People fear you and call you a monster. But after talking to you I think that even if you're a monster, you seem pretty smart. And someone as smart and powerful as you will never attack the village or kill people without a proper reason. Heck, even I never attacked anybody without any reason, Naruto explained. Kurama could sense that the blonde was totally sincere in his reasoning and was satisfied. I can't help but be reminded of Chome by him, I wonder how the bug is doing. Meanwhile in Fu's mindscape, and so, we just laughed it off and then fired a bunch of bijudama at the place. Anyways, that's how the land of Sky's empire got crushed and Ribi got sealed away. Fu remained silent, am I being ignored? Chome asked genuinely worried, Fu's trying to meditate Chome. Chome's Jinchuriki responded, oh, sorry. Then Chome heard a distinct almost growling sound. You're not meditating, you're sleeping. And no I'm not. Yes, you are. I know the difference. Back to Naruto's mindscape. Well, I am pretty impressed with your reasoning. Most humans never see us as anything other masses of chakra with no mind that are to be used as weapons only. That's why I truly hate most of your kind in general. But you can talk and that pretty much means you can think which means you have your own mind and from our recent conversation I can pretty much guess that you're intelligent. Although you do have a short temper just like me. Indeed, what you said is true I have my own mind and soul. Even if I am a humongous mass of chakra, I am not some weapon of mass destruction. However, fear and greed has clouded the human's judgment for a long time. What do you mean? Those who fear us Biju for our power just want us to disappear so that they don't have to live in the fear of getting annihilated by us, for them reasoning is out of question. That is very much the reason most of the people in this village hate you Kit. And then there are those who want to use our power as a weapon to achieve their goals. They don't want to reason with us because you don't usually care about the feelings of those who you want to enslave. Just like Madara Uchiha, explained Kurama while spitting at the name of Madara. But this is so cruel. Indeed, it is, both for us Biju as well as those who are forced to carry us, the Jinchuriki, people like you. Wait, you mean there are other Biju like you and Jinchuriki like me? Indeed, there are nine tailed beasts in total, characterized by the number of tails they possess. The one-tailed Shukaku, he is contained inside that Gara kid. Naruto's eyes widened at the revelation. He knew for certain that there was something similar between the quiet and scary red-haired Sanjenin. He had realized that he could see the same pain, loneliness and rejection from people in Gara's eyes. He now knew the reason. This motivated him to try to understand the Sanjenin even more and maybe even attempt to befriend him. Then there is Matabi, the two-tailed cat, the three-tailed turtle Isobu, Son Goku the four-tailed monkey, Kokuo of the five tails who looks like a hybrid of a dolphin and a horse, then the six-tailed slug Saiken, the seven-tailed beagle Chome who also happens to have an obsession with luck, the eight-tailed Yuki who is more or less a hybrid between an ox and an octopus. Lastly you have me, the nine-tailed fox, Kurama. Every one of us has our own personalities as well as special abilities. I will tell you about them in detail at a later time. However, for your knowledge, I am the strongest of the Biju. That's amazing. And if the strongest Biju trains me then I will definitely take the old man's hat. Take that Tem, I am way more awesome than you. The blonde raised his fist in the air and jumped in excitement. So Kurama, when do we start training and what am I supposed to do? You can start by opening this seal. W-H-A-A-A-A-T. Absolutely not. What's the guarantee that you will not get out and lay waste on the village? Don't you dare try to fool me, Naruto yelled. I expected that you will react like that. Now I need you to listen to me with attention. Unsaid was, and I know that's difficult for you, why is questionable. Naruto crossed his arms around his chest and gave Kurama an annoyed look. Gaki, being sealed not just inside you but multiple Jinchuriki before you for years, I do have some idea of how seals work. The seal that keeps me behind this cage can't be opened by anybody other than its creator, the Yandaimi Hokage or someone who has the key to this seal, which I am sure that Jiraiya possesses. So even if you tried you can't open this seal, the damage would be too extreme for you and me. It also has a backup mechanism to prevent you from opening the seal forcefully without the key. So, both of us get up if I try to tamper with the seal too much. Pretty much. And only Aero Senen can open this seal without any problems because he has the key. Exactly. So why did you advise me to try and open this seal if it can potentially harm you as well? Because I can sense the Yandaimi Hokage's chakra still inside this seal. I am sure if you try to tamper with it then he might appear here. 
And I am sure you might have some questions for him if you ever see him. And with those questions answered we can prepare a training schedule for you. Kurama half lied. So, you mean I can meet the Yandaimi if I try to open this seal? Yup. Then maybe I can ask him why did he choose me to become your container and maybe, just maybe he can tell who my parents were. The blonde mumbled to himself. Naruto got emotional at the thought knowing something about his parents. At least he'll tell me why he sealed the fox inside me of all people and if the seal can't be opened without his permission, then there's nothing to lose here. Yup. Definitely worth a try. So, what do I have to do to meet the Yandaimi? Just try to rip this tag with the kanji of, seal, off. Kurama then extended his nail on which Naruto stood and then raised him up to where the tag of, seal, was. Here goes nothing. Naruto said to no one in particular and started to rip the tag off. As expected, by Kurama of course Naruto felt a hand tap him on the shoulder and he turned back to see a tall and handsome man with bright yellow hair and azure blue eyes smiling at him. The man wore a standard Junin outfit in a white cloak with red flame designs on its borders and on the back of the cloak, the kanji for, Yandaimi Hokage, was written. However, what surprised Naruto the most was that he could feel a lot of affection and love in the eyes of the former Hokage and his smile gave him reassurance and strength. The very presence of the man filled Naruto up with warmth, he couldn't understand why. Why why Yandaimi S. Sama, the blonde stuttered out. The man's smile vanished for a moment and Naruto swore the man was sad for a second but he controlled himself and smiled at the blonde again. It makes me really happy to see you Naruto. A. N. To those who think how can Minato open the seal without the key think back to the fight with pain when Minato repaired the damage to the seal. He didn't need to summon Guratora to tighten the seal. The seal was very loose at that time and he tightened it to its previous levels. However when Jiraiya wanted to loosen the seal a bit to experiment with Naruto's control over Kurama during the time skip he needed Guratora and the key. So I concluded that Minato being the creator of the seal doesn't need the key to do anything with the seal. He can do anything he wants. As for others, they need the key to modify the seal. Here modify includes opening, tightening or loosening whatsoever. The pairings in this story that I have decided till now are. 1. Neruhina. 2. Minakushi. 3. Shikitima. I haven't decided whether I should do Sasusaku or not, but that's the most probable one as I kinda left a hint for it in the first chapter but still you can suggest in your reviews whether I should do Sasusaku or not. I do want to give Sasuke a partner even though he is the most difficult character for me to write a romance for. As far as character bashing is concerned, I am not yet sure whether I am going to bash anyone in particular except for Danzo of course. As far as Sasuke is concerned, in the first chapter itself I made it clear from the way I presented him that I won't be bashing him. He may have his fall into darkness and a redemption but he won't be bashed. I truly believe that Hinata, Sasuke, Shikamaru, Gara, and Choji are Naruto's closest friends. Of course Hinata is much more but a best friend is definitely one of the things she is to him. Kakashi, Minato and Jiraiya definitely won't be bashed. Naruto might throw a rant at both his teachers but that will be it, no bashing. As for the rest of them, including Sakura, I would request you all to suggest in your reviews whether I should include bashing for anyone in the story. Another thing I would like to clear up is that neither this one nor any other FIC I may write in the future will have harems. I hate them with a passion, romancing multiple girls is totally against the character of the Naruto I know, and all my fix will be Neruhina and that's non-negotiable. Chapter 4. I'm not alone anymore. Did the Yandaimi just call me Naruto, he knows my name. But from what I am told, he died the day I was born after sealing the Kyubi into me, so how does he know me and why does it feel so, good and warm in his presence? Why Yandaimi Sama, how do you know my name? The fourth couldn't help give Naruto a sad smile. Well, I am the one who named you so of course I will know it. You are my son after all. Naruto stared wide-eyed at the man before him. His mind was running through a million thoughts, he couldn't focus on anything. His idol, the man whom everyone in Konoha looked up to, the man he wanted to surpass and also the man who sealed the Kyubi inside him condemning him to a life of hatred and scorn was his own father, the father he never got to know till now. Why 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 you aaaaremm my why 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 fff father. Naruto asked stuttering in a way that would put Hinata to shame, still not believing that the fourth could be his own father. Yes, I'm Minato Namikaze, Yandaimi Hokage of Konoha, I'm your father and quite proud to be so. Replied Minato smiling. Naruto was finally able to bring his thoughts together. The Yandaimi was his own father. If the blonde were 16 years old, he might have been able to express his emotions through anger and might have punched Minato in the gut, but this Naruto was still a child, a 13 years old child, so he just burst into tears while falling into his knees. 
T then W-Y, Naruto asked his father in between sobs. Minato ran up to his son and embraced him tightly. He couldn't hold some tears either. W-Y did you seal the fox inside me? Why did you leave me? Why did you have to die? I am sorry son, but, at that time I didn't have any other option. The Kyubi was attacking the village and the only way for it to be stopped was for it to be sealed into a newborn child and I could not ask for someone else's baby. How can I ask for another man's child to be sacrificed when I can't sacrifice my own? Besides who other than my own son can I trust to be able to hold the Kyubi's power and eventually work with him and become the strongest shinobi ever? W what you wanted me to work with the fox and control its power. Yes, I did. During the third shinobi world war, I had to fight the Jinchuriki of the Hachibi. I was amazed by the fact he managed to become friends with his tailed beast and they worked together. That man was a great shinobi. Then I have come across the Jinchurikis of the Gobi and the Yanbi and they even managed to work well together with their tailed beasts. I was sure that my boy can make friends with the Kayubi one day and from what I have just learned you already did. I am so glad. So, you think I can trust Kurama and open the seal? Son, being inside the seal made it so I could always watch over you as well as the Kayubi. Six years ago, something interesting happened. The explanation is long and I might fade away before I could explain you in detail what had happened. But I can say with certainty that Kurama can be trusted. Oh okay. But I will tell you this though. Before you, your mother Kashina Uzumaki was the Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune. Naruto was again shocked at that. Now for a female Jinchuriki, the time of childbirth is the most difficult time of their lives. At that time, the seal is the weakest. So, your mother was taken to a safe house outside the village a few days before you were born. The location was top secret and heavily guarded. However, a masked man who called himself Madara Uchiha was able to kill all the guards and got to us minutes after you were born. Naruto was too shocked to respond to that. The man killed the Sandame's wife who was assisting your mother in childbirth and took you hostage. Although I managed to get you to safety, he got to your mother and before I could save her, that man ripped the Kayubi out of her, subjugated Kurama to a very strong genjutsu and made it to attack the village. He even tried to kill me so that I couldn't stop the Kayubi from killing everyone in the village. I admit, he was very strong and almost got me but I managed to defeat him and force him to escape. I then had to fight the Kayubi. Your mother by being ripped apart from her biju was already on the verge of death. She offered to seal the fox back into her and die with it but in that case, in some years Kurama would have reformed as you see a biju can't die until you start dealing with Otsutsuki but you should be fine there, but that's like 15 years out from now, butterfly effect shouldn't cause those incidents to get pushed up by a decade or so, Rrr, ah, it shouldn't do that right. The masked man, before escaping, told me that he would destroy the world. I knew that he would come back for the Kayubi again so I decided to entrust you with the Kayubi's power and believe that you would take that man down and save the world. SSO was that why you sealed the fox inside me? Yes, though I sealed only half of the Kayubi inside you and took the other half with me to the Shinigami's stomach through the Reaper Death Seal, but due to some interesting events, you now have the full Kurama inside you and he can be trusted. If you say so dad, I will trust him. BBUYUD do love me right? Naruto asked teary eye. Minato embraced him tightly in response. Inwardly he was cursing himself for the failure of a father he had been. A hey man, not your fault, well mostly. You, probably could have come up with some other way to seal Kurama that didn't involve you dying but whatever. Of course, I love you a lot son, you and your mother are the greatest gifts I ever received. I I love you too dad. It's just that people told me that I was abandoned for being a demon. Minato tightened his fists. Idiotic, he spat. We could never abandon you son. Both your mom and I love you a lot and we always will. Thank you, said Naruto wiping his tears away and giving a smile. Now, I will release the seal so that you and Kurama can work together without hindrance but then my chakra will fade away. I am sorry that I have to leave again so soon my boy. What? But I just got to know my dad, I have a lot to talk about. You haven't told me anything about mom yet, don't go please see. Naruto pleaded, I am sorry son but I must open this seal. Jiraiya's sensei won't trust Kurama as easily and it will take years for him to entrust you with the key, so I must do this now. Don't worry though, I sealed some of Kashina's chakra in the seal too so you can talk to her when she appears. Really, I can meet mom too. Yes, you can, after I open the seal. Oh okay. Then Minato charged up his remaining chakra and opened the seal. After that his astral body started fading away. I guess this is it son. Just know that, not if I can help it said Kurama and supplied Minato with a little bit of chakra. Minato's body solidified again. The fourth Hokage couldn't believe what just happened. 
This was simple yet brilliant. I can continuously supply a very small fraction of my chakra. This will keep you here as long as the Gaki lives so you are staying here for a long time Yandaimi. Though you will just be a voice inside his head but it's far better than simply fading away. K Kurama, thank you so much. Said Naruto teary eyed in joy. He won't be alone anymore his father will always be with him. Even if he will just be a voice inside his head, it was better than anything he could have asked for. Well, seeing that Naruto doesn't have to fight you to gain control over your powers, we can bring Kashina out too, commented Minato with a smile. Why is that? Naruto asked in anticipation. Yes Naruto, Kashina Uzumaki, the woman who had been the light of my life and your mother, her chakra is in this seal too. The Jinchuriki was teary-eyed again as Minato concentrated his chakra and went through a few hand seals in rapid succession. When he finished, a glow of chakra appeared from the now open seal, the chakra flew and settled in front of the father and son and took the form of a woman. When Naruto observed her, he found that he had no words to describe the woman in front of him. She wore simple clothes, had shining red hair that went down beyond her waist and she was just too beautiful. When she looked at Naruto, the blonde boy was overwhelmed by the affection he received from her. Never before had he felt so much love. The boy just ran up to Kashina and jumped and hugged her with all his might and cried again, shouting, Mom. In between his sobs, Kashina couldn't help crying herself. She had seen the terrible childhood he has had up to that point. She even had the misfortune to experience Kurama's memories of Naruto's death in the other timeline. Before walking up to the Minato bow to the nine-tailed fox. Kurama, can you please? The former Hokage requested the Kyubi bowing down. The fox was actually amused with such a gesture. Don't mention it. Kurama replied while supplying a little bit of chakra to Kashina which stabilized her. Kashina looked at her husband in a bit of confusion and saw that he was also getting a small continuous supply of chakra from the Kyubi like herself. Honey, is this what I think it is? Yes Kashina-chan, Kurama has stabilized our bodies with a continuous chakra supply, so we will be here for Naruto for as long as he lives. Minato replied smiling. That's amazing D-A-T-T-E-B-A-N-E, -T -T -E, the redhead shouted. Upon hearing his mom's verbal tick, Naruto got startled for a moment and then he grinned. Mom has a verbal tick similar to me, Dadbeo, the younger blonde shouted. Dadbeo huh, you really are my son, Naruto. Kashina said giggling, I had a thought that you two were going to be alike but I never imagined you two would be so much alike, said Minato rubbing his hand at the back of his head as he approached his wife and son. Only if I had red hair like mom, I would look even cooler. Naruto exclaimed, huh, so you also like my hair color. Kashina giggled, hey, what's wrong with my hair color? Minato faked complain, what a touching family reunion, commented Kurama grinning, oh, thanks for everything fuzzball, said Kashina thanking the Kyubi. Kurama sweat dropped at his new nickname, oh, that's such a cool name, Naruto exclaimed, don't get any bright ideas Gaki. Kurama warned only for his warning to fall on deaf ears. That's right, that's what you are, one huge fuzzball. Naruto exclaimed again. The nine-tailed fox sighed knowing that for a long time he would be having this new nickname. Minato giggled at the antics of his son and wife. Definitely a lot alike, I just hope Naruto's wife turns out a bit like me. Meanwhile at the Konoha hospital, even though being unconscious, Hinata sneezed. Okay, okay, I now have a lot of things to ask. How did you two fall in love? How did you become Hokage dad? What was the interesting thing that happened six years ago? Naruto questioned breathlessly excited to learn almost everything about his parents. Slow down a bit son. I know we have a lot to talk but I feel that you are very tired of today's training so you should rest a bit for now. We can talk tomorrow, said Minato. But dad, now Naruto-chan, as much as I hate to admit it your dad is right. You do look tired. Don't worry it's not like we are going anywhere, said Kashina to reassure her son. Okay if you say so. Naruto sighed. Speaking of your training just how dare that pervert throw my baby off that cliff. He's so dead d-a-t-t-e-b-a-n-e. -E. Said Kashina cracking her knuckles. Even Minato cracked his knuckles at this. Meanwhile sleeping at an inn somewhere in Konoha, a certain white-haired Sanin felt a chill through his spine. He discarded his thoughts soon though, and went back to his dreams of a certain blonde-haired woman with huge bosoms. Back in his house Naruto fell asleep peacefully with a grin plastered on his face. After all these years he was finally not alone anymore. Chapter 5, Training Begins. Naruto woke up with a groan as sunlight fell on his face. Oh, come on morning already. The blonde complained. Come on Naruto-chan don't you have training to do. Kashina said from inside his mindscape. Naruto suddenly shouted, Mom you're still here. 
Shish. Not so loud, we can hear what you want to say if you just think about it and I guess it will be better for the time being if you keep your knowledge of a secret as well as releasing Karama's seal. I am sure the third will freak out if he sees that your seal is open and I would love to see Jiraiya sensei's face when he sees the open seal too. Said Minato. That reminds me, Gigi never told me about you whenever I asked, damned old man. I kind of figured that you won't be told about us for a long time Naruto. The third perhaps did this to protect you from our enemies. You see I am not exactly loved in Iwa and Kumo. Kumo had even tried to kidnap Kashina in her childhood. Apart from that, certain elements in the village hated me too. So that's why the third perhaps has kept your heritage a secret from you. I am certain that very few people in the village even know about you being our son in the first place. Naruto sighed. Kashina could only ruffle his hair to comfort him. Although I would like to know why Jiraiya sensei or Kakashi didn't show up in your life earlier. For Kami's sake we made that old pervert your godfather. Minato said angrily. At that time both Jiraiya and Kakashi felt chills down their spines. Let's get back to Naru-chan's training Minato-kun, said Kashina, uncharacteristically letting her frustration on the two perverts slide for the time being. Alright, so son who are you facing this time? Neji Hayuga, Naruto spat. Well, so you're facing Hazashi's son in the first round then. If he is anything like his father was then he will be a formidable opponent. How do you know about Neji being Hazashi's son? Kurama's memories. That guy is in. Naruto spat again. Don't let your anger consume you son. If you want to keep your blood vow then you have to prepare a strategy since you are facing a stronger opponent. Now before you think of using Kurama's powers let me remind you that you mustn't use it unless absolutely necessary and definitely not before the whole village. I don't even know how much of my power this younger body of yours can handle Gaki. So instead we will be taking it step by step, a bit slowly. Kurama commented much to Naruto's increasing frustration. So, what do I do to kick that, s? Naruto asked. Hmm, if you already know who your opponent is, you should start collecting as much information about him as possible. Minato suggested. Okay, I think if I ask Bushy Brows, Kiba or Shino, they might give me some insight about the stuck up. Naruto summoned three shadow clones. You three are to meet up with Kiba, Shino and Bushy Brows and get any information about Neji and report back to me. Wait a minute son, you can get their memories back if they simply dispel and they don't have to physically return to you. It will be a waste of time. Minato explained. What? This is a special property of the Shadow Clone Jutsu, the Nadaim Hokage created it as an infiltration technique. That's so awesome. Naruto exclaimed. Alright, you three dispel after collecting the information. Understood. Yes boss. The Shadow Clone saluted and took off. Now Naruto, we need to work on your Jutsu arsenal. Since you are facing a Hayuga and Hazashi's son no less, you must prepare for the worst. What do you mean dad? The Hayuga have an almost impenetrable defense technique known as the Kaden, or 8 trigrams, heavenly rotation. This jutsu can repel almost all ninjutsu attacks and you can't physically approach them either as the Kaden will throw you back. So that means I can't get close to him. Don't worry, I know a jutsu that will be a perfect counter to the Kaden. What is it? Naruto asked excited. The Rasengan, an A-ranked jutsu I invented. Minato then held out his palm and soon a spiraling sphere of chakra was created on it. Naruto was starry-eyed when he saw the jutsu. That's freaking awesome Dadbeo. Thanks son. In the real world, Naruto held out his palm and tried to focus chakra on it only for nothing to happen. The blonde groaned in frustration. Not so fast, Minato said from the mindscape, while Naruto could hear his mother giggling. There are three phases to train with for performing the Rasengan. Okay. For the first phase, go and get a lot of water balloons. Huh, gotta love those seemingly nonsensical training methods that get people thinking you're eccentric or insane. An hour, later, why is this so difficult? A certain blonde kid shouted holding a water balloon in his hand. Don't get so impatient son, it took three years for me to create this jutsu. When I showed it to Jiraiya sensei, he took six months to master it. It's an A-ranked jutsu after all. Oh come on dad, you know I don't have that much time for the finals. Naruto complained. You can use your shadow clones for training as well. Huh. Naruto asked momentarily confused then it hit him. I am such an idiot. The blonde exclaimed and created 20 shadow clones, each picked up a water balloon and tried to burst it by rotating chakra. In the meantime, Naru-chan, you can use some shadow clones to work on your chakra control. It will be helpful for you to master the Rasengan and any other jutsus you'll learn in the future. Kashina suggested. Good idea Kushi-chan, Naruto. Make 20 more shadow clones and have them practice some exercises while water walking, 20 more to practice tree walking while keeping a leaf on their foreheads. 
As far as the Rasengan is concerned, try to rotate the chakra in multiple directions, you are rotating in one direction only. For today that will be enough training and don't forget to meet up with Jiraiya Sensei and behave like your usual self, we don't want anybody to suspect anything for now. Explained Minato. Okay dad, I will have some breakfast and meet up with Aero Senen. You guys, get this balloon busted by sunset. Am I the only one who feels like that sentence doesn't sound right? Then Naruto summoned 40 more shadow clones and as per Minato's suggestion sent 20 of them to do the water walking exercises and 20 more to perfect the tree walking exercise. At sunset, Naruto was on his way back from a training session with Jiraiya. The two spent most of their time in perfecting summons. Due to his better chakra control, Naruto was able to summon any toads he wanted. He was cautious enough to avoid using Kurama's chakra so as not to make the toad sage suspicious. However, he was able to summon a number of toads from size of a few inches to almost 5 feet in height. His first summon of the day was a small toad called Gamakichi. The toad was funny. Due to an earlier instruction from Minato, Naruto had remembered to keep some food items with himself for the toads. After offering Gamakichi a candy, the two hit it off quite well. His next summon was another toad of similar size as Gamakichi called Gamatatsu. Of all the toads he summoned throughout the day, Gamakichi and Gamatatsu were the ones Naruto thought were the coolest. By the end of the day the three were buddies. However, the two small toads were not useful for a fight at that time. So, he had to summon larger toads. He found out that the toads mostly used fire and water style jutsus and some carried swords. However, he figured that his summons would not be of much use against Neji. Jiraiya also agreed with that. The Toad Sage stated that they would spar continuously from the next day onwards in order to improve Naruto's speed. After seeing the Toads use elemental jutsu, something had clicked inside Naruto's mind and he asked Jiraiya to teach him some jutsu like the ones the Toads used. Also seeing Sasuke use different types of fire style jutsus, Naruto was a little jealous that he couldn't pull off stuff like that. After pondering over it a little, Jiraiya had agreed unlike the previous timeline to figure out Naruto's natural affinity and work on some elemental jutsus. On the way, suddenly memories of a dispelled clone came back to the blonde. Yeah, the blonde shouted on the road making some passers-by glance at him with disgust, as usual, Naruto noticed the disgust in their glares but paid no mind, he wasn't alone anymore after all. He ran home. By that time, the clones that were practicing balloon bursting had dispelled. Just to be sure, Naruto picked up another water balloon, rotated his chakra through it and it burst in seconds. Did you see that? Naruto said loudly as he jumped in excitement. Well done son, that was the fastest anyone mastered the first stage of the Rasengan, said Minato as Naruto found himself back in his mindscape. Minato then patted his shoulders. So tell me the next step, dad. I can't wait to master the Rasengan. Alright, I will tell you but take rest for now and dispel the clones that were practicing chakra control. Don't make them dispel all at once, otherwise you'll suffer severe headache and nausea. Naruto, nodded and made a shadow clone to go to the other clones practicing chakra control have them dispelled according to Minato's instructions. What about the clones you sent to collect information on Neji, Naru-chan, Kashina asked. Well mom, Kiba didn't have that much information. He mentioned that Hinata-chan is faster than him in Taijutsu and Neji should be even faster. It seems, Hinata-chan doesn't talk much about her family with her teammates. The one visiting Shino also got a similar response. However surprisingly the clone visiting Bushy Brows got a lot of info. So, what have you got? Well, when my clone visited Lee at the hospital, Bushier Brows sensei was also there with Lee and their other teammate Tenten. Although they were Neji's sensei and teammates, they did not hesitate to talk about Neji's fighting style. According to Gai sensei, although Neji is not expected to know a lot of Hyuga main branch moves, he does happen to know moves like the, 8 trigrams, 64 palms. Tenten confirmed that Neji does know the Katen but he's just learned it and is still trying to master it, which she knew because she had been helping him. Lee mentioned something about, 8 trigrams, 128 palms, which is an improved version of the 64 palm technique. Lee said that in order to escape the hits from those technique he has to use the second or even the third gate although he mentioned that was with his weights on. I don't know if I can pull that off, so I am basically toast if Neji hits me with that technique since all my tenkatsus will be closed. Not quite Gaki, unlike that Lee kid, I can open your chakra points if the Hyuga closes them so don't worry about that. Also, regarding escaping his hits, you can create a chakra cloak by drawing on my chakra. A one-tailed version one cloak will be enough for you to escape his hits. I will teach it to you in a week, it won't be that difficult for you. 
After thinking a bit, I realize that your body can manage up to three to four tails of my chakra in version one cloak. I will teach you about it next week when we start training on it. Kurama explained much to Naruto's joy and satisfaction. Do you know mom, Bushy Brows Sensei and Bushy Brows explained all this to me knowing that I was going to fight their own team member. They said that I do have a right to learn about my opponent before my fight and it's, unethful, to deny information to a comrade. They are really cool. Bushy Brows Sensei even agreed to work with me every morning to improve my speed in Taijutsu. That's really nice of guy. Learn as much from him as you can son, he is the best Taijutsu user in Konoha and quite possibly he might even be the greatest Taijutsu master in all five great nations. However, promise me that you'll not go around screaming about youth every day. Dear, please no editor shivers in horror, you got not only me scared but also Speedwagon as well. Even Speedwagon is afraid, and don't wear that green spandex ever d-a-t-t-e-b-a-n-e, Kashina said aloud. Please don't unleash that horror. Come on mom, that jumpsuit looks cool, it won't be that bad to try it. Absolutely not. Minato, Kashina and Kurama all shouted at the same time. Naruto sighed in defeat. Alright, alright, I won't wear a green spandex suit, don't worry. Good, said Kashina. Thank. Naruto had something he wanted to ask his mom about but his mind kept drifting back to what happened in the hospital mere moments before his clone dispel. The clone had its hands in the sign to dispel itself when a voice he had just finished speaking to called out. Hey, Naruto. Team Guy's markswoman, Tenten, approached as the source of the call. Naruto acknowledged Tenten before she started speaking. Look, I know you have that blood vow and all, but your chances of actually winning against Neji are practically non-existent. I know asking you to just give up is probably not going to go over well. So how about this, I know people when they realize they are going to lose or can't possibly win in these exams against their opponents instead try to spite their opponents by rendering them unable to advance as well, either by crippling or hurting them too badly to go on. When, not if when, you get into that spot against Neji, please don't him over out of spite, what do you say? Tenten's attempt at a smile became shaky as the air in the room became cold and Naruto's grin became so frigid and his eyes shut for a moment. Naruto started, sure, I promise I won't neji Tem over when I realize I can't beat him. Tenten let out a sigh of relief and she spoke, thanks for th. Because he won't even get me to that point, Dad Bayo. Tenten's breath caught as Naruto's eyes opened back up, the blue having become blood red and his pupils became slits. I will be making him pay. He could have just let Hinata-chan off easy and just finished the joke of a fight quickly and left her maybe a little down, but he wanted to break her. Any chance of getting off easy is already gone for Neji, I'm going to break him for it. He's going to be leaving that arena of bloodied pulp I beat him into before I go to the next round. Tenten was terrified by the calm tone of voice he used throughout his spiel, this wasn't a threat but a promise and the words she heard him say once made it all the more chilling, I never go back on my word. Before anything else could be said, Guy burst in, Yash. Naruto-kun, if you wish, I would be proud to instruct you on Taijutsu in preparation for the third exam. Naruto smiled widely, thanks Guy-sensei, I'll be sure to take you up on it. Tenten's fear became absolute horror as the likelihood of Neji's defeat became absolute. Just before Naruto's clone could dispel, Tenten's horror drove her to say one final thing. Oh, mom, do you mind if I ask you something? Naruto asked a tad nervously. No, I don't mind, what is it Naru-chan? Well, you see, my clone that visited Lee at the hospital also snuck into Hinata-chan's room, said Naruto in a sad voice. You see, she's not allowed visitors yet. She was just sitting there on the bed, lying unconscious, with all sorts of tubes all over her body. Seeing her like that, I felt a pain in my chest. I really felt helpless. I have never felt this sad for someone and I don't know why I feel this way, so why? Naruto said looking down. Kashina hugged her son and rubbed his back a bit. Naru-chan, I think you are falling in love with her. Kashina said smiling, Minato smiled as well. From your memories we can say that she is a really kind and nice girl, she will be great for you. Kashina further explained, hoping to hook the two together as soon as possible. From Kurama's memories of the previous timeline, Minato and Kashina were very distressed over Naruto's painful death and his regrets about Hinata in his dying moments. Naruto looked at his mother and gave a smile. But I must tell her about Kurama. I kinda want to tell her everything now. Do you think she will accept me after knowing that? Son, I see a lot of myself in her, I am sure she will accept you and stand by you no matter what, said Minato. Naruto smiled again, alright, I will visit her as soon as she wakes up and I will tell her everything. Now son, let's get to the next step of the Rasengan. 
For that you need to repeat the first step but with a hard rubber ball instead of a water balloon. It is about strengthening your rotation. Got it dad. I will get it down in no time dad bayo. Saying that Naruto wished his parents good night, had dinner and went to sleep. Starting the next day, his training was about to become a lot harder going forward. Though unbeknownst to the Uzumaki family, a spy had been watching Naruto. A woman dressed in an Anbu uniform with a crop top that had one full sleeve while the other arm was completely uncovered from shoulder to wrist with a plain white mask with the leaf crest of Konoha and the kanji for root on the mask. With some modifications to the overall ensemble. Her mission had been watching Naruto to gather information for conscripting him into root in the eventual conscription. She had followed through and found her suppressed emotions began to bubble up as ancient memories from long gone days surfaced from the woman's observations. His hair and eyes brought back some vague flashbacks, of a man whose presence she would describe as the closest to reassuring. And the boy's way of talking reminded her of a woman with waist long red hair with a very lively smile. The vague flashbacks made her feel uneasy, very uneasy. However, she was able to suppress the unease, she had been trained well after all. The only thing that could necessitate a need to report to Danzo was the Jinchuriki's sudden change in behavior starting yesterday. The change wasn't really noticeable to someone not trained in surveillance and espionage. However, to one of the best trained root agents, such things were easier to notice. The boy was slowly starting to talk less and was not paying attention to others abhorring him. This was a change necessitating a report to her boss. Her mission demanded she do it, but the masked root found herself unwilling to do so, as if she was struggling against herself in this endeavor. Even before this mission started, sometimes seeing the shinobi of her own age, made this woman feel uneasy and brought her some flashbacks. Flashbacks in which she found herself to be an entirely different person, lively, laughing and smiling with them, why and how she couldn't tell. And as a perfect shinobi in service of Konoha, she was required to get rid of all these emotions, all those flashbacks served no purpose except for obstructing her from carrying out her duty. But suppressing those vague memories was for some reason painful. And once the mission to observe Uzumaki Naruto had started, that subtle hidden pain started to resurface. The flashbacks became more frequent, starting to cause fission in her mind. Time would tell where this would go. But at that moment, the woman for some reason found herself instinctively state, you do your parents proud, Uzumaki Naruto. Chapter 6, Training Continues. One day after bursting a water balloon, Naruto was standing in a clearing in front of a tree, sweating heavily due to the continuous jutsu practice since the last two hours. The blonde was practicing, wind style, great breakthrough, AD rank wind style fudden jutsu, his very first elemental ninjutsu. His task was to break several branches of a tree, some 15 feet away from him using the said jutsu. So far, the endeavor hadn't succeeded. Flashback. So Aero Senen, are you going teach me any kick-ass elemental ninjutsu today? Naruto asked to Jiraiya, who was feigning ignorance towards the boy. Not so fast Gaki, and can't you call me Jiraiya Sensei ever? I call you the way I see you, you are a pervert and you call yourself a sage, so it's pretty easy to give you a nickname, the blonde replied somewhat irritated. I have told you several times already, I am not a pervert, I am a, Jiraiya was cut off by Naruto's grumbling. Oh, come on I get it you are a super pervert. Now shall we get back to some awesome ninjutsu arrow senin, the blonde shouted. Jiraiya sighed thinking how much his apprentice resembled his mother. Asterisk in the meantime, within Naruto's mindscape. If I ever get out and see him, I'll castrate this pervert datbang. Kashina shouted. Meanwhile Minato was thinking why he had made the said pervert Naruto's godfather. Back to Naruto and Jiraiya. Why do I feel like I might get the beating of a lifetime if I keep showing off the ways of the pervert to this kid? Air well never mind, Jiraiya thought and then brought his attention back to his apprentice. Gaki first let's determine your chakra affinity. Jiraiya said while giving Naruto a chakra paper. The blonde looked at it attentively. So, Naruto, channel a bit of your chakra to this paper. If it gets wrinkled it means that you have lightning, it gets soaked if you have water, gets burnt if you have fire, sliced into two for wind and earth if it crumbles into dust. Naruto nodded, held the paper between his middle and four fingers and channeled a bit of chakra into it. The paper got cleanly sliced into two pieces and the both pieces burnt down. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow. So, both wind and fire huh? Not bad, not bad at all, two attacking type chakra natures. Interesting, but seeing the refinedness of the cut, I guess your wind affinity is stronger than the fire. So, we should start with wind nature. Can you tell me what's special about wind element arrow senin? Well, it's an attacking type element and good for medium range attacks. However, it can be applied in ways that both short and long ranges fairly well. 
Short range especially, if you ever see a Suma fight with those trench blades of his, it's pretty emblematic of how wind is best used at short range by concentrating it to slice opponents to chunks. Can be used to keep your opponents at a distance. It's stronger against lightning and weaker against fire. Luckily, you have a fire affinity that compensates for the weakness of the wind element. Wouldn't wind strengthen fire if the two elements combine? Astute observation. Yup, that's how it works after all. Jiraiya replied. Okay, so what jutsu will you teach me? How to raise a storm, create a tornado maybe? Then Gar knows. Sorry Naruto, you aren't dragonborn. I typed that and then the Elder Scrolls 5, Skyrim theme started playing. Hold your horses Gaki, you can't do stuff like that yet. Besides I have never heard of any shinobi who can create a storm through a jutsu. Some things are just the nature's forte. Here, I got a basic jutsu for every element for you, since we are starting with wind, you should get this one down first. Jiraiya added. Naruto opened the scroll. Wind style. Great breakthrough. Rank. D. When mastered, the user can release a blast of wind from his mouth. Hmm, interesting. Let's see if it can throw that Neji's out of the arena or not. Naruto thought. EHH, might shove the stick even further if Neji lands just the right wrong way. Jiraiya demonstrated him the jutsu and showed him the hand signs. Then told him that if he can break at least 10 branches off a tree with the jutsu, he could consider it done. Then the sage left the blonde to do his research. Flashback ends. Arrow sent in his damned research. He really has it easy. Naruto grumbled to himself. It has been two hours since Jiraiya had left. So far, the blonde had been able to cut a few leaves off a branch only. Naruto sighed, and then suddenly a bright light bulb went off in his head blinding all the three tenants there. The blonde created 50 shadow clones. Let's get this damn jutsu down in three hours boys. Naruto ordered. Yes sir. All the clones replied saluting. The clones then left the area and went away a bit further to practice. Then the blonde created 10 more shadow clones and had them transformed into birds, insects and even rocks. Keep an eye out for arrow sending around the area and dispel if you see him. Naruto ordered and the clones got to their work immediately, if only Jiraiya was this meticulous when peeping. Son, Naruto heard Minato call him from inside his mindscape. Yes dad, there are some special exercises to master wind manipulation in every other element. For wind manipulation, pick up a leaf and try to cut it with your chakra just like you slice the chakra paper into two. If you do it then mastering wind based jutsu becomes easier. On it, dad. Naruto then created 20 more shadow clones and had them working on the leaf cutting exercise. He had also left 10 clones in his apartment to work on bursting the rubber ball. Four hours later, Jiraiya returned to see Naruto's progress. The clones that had transformed into birds had alerted the blonde in time and Naruto had dispelled all the clones present in the area. Then the exhaustion of all the clones hit him. Jiraiya found him lying on the ground totally worn out. Looks like you worked really hard Gaki, so how much progress did you make? The Toad Sage asked. Naruto, already out of breath, pointed at a tree. Jiraiya saw that six branches were cut off and thrown at least 20 feet away from the tree. Jiraiya knew that the blonde won't get the jutsu down in one day but cutting six branches off was still good progress. I must say you made good progress Gaki, I am sure you will get it down tomorrow. We still have 25 days for the final so don't get too worked up on this and get some rest. Let's call it a day here. All right Arrow Senen, I will get this jutsu down tomorrow for sure. Just you watch, Naruto replied as he got up head home. The teacher and student then parted for the day. As far as the leaf cutting exercise was concerned, Naruto's clones had succeeded in cutting the leaf almost halfway. The Jinchuriki was confident of getting it done the next day. The next day, early in the morning Naruto joined Maida Guy in his early morning workout. Guy asked him to make 10 laps around the village and 100 sets of push-ups after that. Then the two worked on Naruto's basic taijutsu stance. Guy worked with Naruto for 2 hours and made him try various stances of various taijutsu styles to see which one suited the blonde the most. Unfortunately for both, none of the stances seemed to come naturally to the blonde. Guy then had an idea. He made the blonde try out the taijutsu style of the dragon's fist. To Naruto's pleasure he was able to naturally settle into the stance. Looks like this style can bring out your flames of youth the best way possible Naruto-kun. The spandex wearing Jonin exclaimed. So as to not insult Guy, Naruto struggled hard to not cover his ears. So how exactly do Bushy Brows and his teammates put up with Guy Sensei's ultra loud yelling? Ha, huh. and I am called Loudmouth. I swear I can be considered a silent person compared to him, Naruto thought while Guy gave him his nice guy pose. Yes, Guy Sensei. This stance feels quite comfortable and natural to me. 
This is the initial stance of the Dragon Fist style, an ancient taijutsu form not seen ever since the Warring States period and there were very few people who were able to master it. Guy explained a bit seriously. So, if I master this, I will be a legendary ninja Dadbeo. Naruto exclaimed, Indeed, I believe your flames of youth burn bright enough to master this youthful style. Let's get to training quickly Guy sensei I will get this form mastered in no time. Guy raised his hand and Naruto immediately got into attention. Naruto-kun, this is an ancient technique which does not follow a set of stances or hitting styles like the Juken, gentle fist, or Goken, the hard fist. Rather a master of dragon fist unpredictably switches through moves of various stances. The only known user of this form are the Shodai Hokage Hashirama Senju. Again, this style is ancient and I doubt if any useful scrolls for this style are still here in the village. However, I will talk to Hokage-sama about it and I am sure we will find something out. Till then we will work on your speed and dodging. Understood Gai-sensei, replied Naruto, a bit depressed that he will have to wait till Gai obtained any scrolls for the Dragon Fist technique. Tomorrow we will do 20 laps around the village and 120 push UPS. May the flames of youth burn brightly within you. Guy explained as Naruto bid farewell to his new and overenthusiastic taijutsu instructor. Is it just me or does Guy's training method feel like Saitama's? Also, Naruto, these would be drastically improved with a certain someone there to suffer train alongside you. Naruto had a quick breakfast at Ichiraku's. Then he went to his apartment and created 10 clones to work on bursting the rubber ball and he went away. He then set 10 more to work on the leaf cutting exercise. However, the blonde found out that leaving so many shadow clones at home was not a very bright idea. The clones would empty all his instant ramen whenever they felt hungry. So, the blonde decided to change the situation. Jiraiya and Naruto met up near the same cliff where the Sanin had pushed the blonde over the edge, it had become their regular training spot. Hey Aero Senin, yesterday I figured something interesting about my, shadow clone jutsu. And what is that gaki? You see yesterday after leaving from here I decided to spar a bit with a clone. After I landed a hit and dispelled it, I felt like watching myself get hit. Then I summoned another clone and hit it again and the same feeling came back when it dispelled. It seems I get their memories back when they dispel. Jiraiya smiled. So, you finally figured it out Gaki. Good for you. You see that's a property of the shadow clone jutsu. The user gets the memories of the clones back when they dispel. So, if I use them for training here, I suppose I can get the jutsu down faster. Yeah, you can kid. Alright, you'd better go get some new jutsu for me, I will have this one down in 3 hours Dadbeo. Then Naruto summoned 100 clones and had them all practice the, wind style, break breakthrough, on a similar number of unsuspecting trees. Jiraiya as usual left to do his, research. True to his word Naruto managed to break 10 branches. He then decided to strengthen this jutsu and continued practicing. Setting himself the blow out a tree with, great breakthrough, alone by the time of finals. Seeing that Jiraiya was not around yet, Naruto set out to continue the leaf cutting exercise and just like before he had some clones to keep watch. Three hours later he had managed to cut the leaf 70%. He hoped to complete the exercise by the next day or two. When Jiraiya came back, he found that, Naruto had exceeded his expectations by taking out 15 branches of a tree. Impressed, the Toad Sage decided to get the blonde working on his next jutsu. When Naruto got back to his apartment, he groaned at not making any progress with the second step of his Rasengan training however his parents assured that he was making progress. Before going to bed, Naruto decided to head to the hospital to check up on Hinata, or we can say that he felt being pulled there. So, at night he sneaked into Hinata's room bypassing all nurses and doctors there. This was no big deal for Konoha's number one prankster, he can sneak into places with even higher security without breaking a sweat in a hospital was nothing for him. When Naruto got to saw Hinata still unconscious lying on the hospital bed, being fed by a saline tube and all sorts of instruments wired to her, he felt a sharp pen in his chest. It hit him harder than the memories of the clone that had visited her earlier. The blonde pulled a stool and sat down by her side and kept looking at her. Seeing her like that he became teary-eyed without even realizing. Slowly he reached for her hand and gently held it with both of his hands. Hanada chan I, I don't even know how I started calling you, Chan, but it feels just right for me and I feel a lot of pain seeing you like this, Naruto then gently held her hand and rubbed his thumb over it. He felt another warm sensation in his heart along, similar to the one he felt when he met his parents. This feeling is similar to when I met dad and mom, am I really, the blonde was indeed coming to terms with what exactly what he felt for Hanada. He then proceeded to place her hand on his own forehead and held it there while closing his eyes. 
he couldn't help shed a few tears while watching her like this. Sakura-chan told me that I somehow inspired you. I don't know if there is anything about me that can be inspiring for anyone but I am honored if you feel like that for me, and I will be glad if we could be much more, much, much more than friends, Hanada-chan, saying that Naruto carefully put her hand where it was. Moved his fingers through her hair for few minutes and rubbed her cheeks. He spent almost two hours in Hanada's hospital room that night and while leaving, somehow, he felt like an invisible force pulling him back towards her and under the influence of the same invisible force, somehow Naruto ended up by her side again, somehow his face came closer to hers and somehow his lips got pressed against her forehead. Suddenly Naruto came to his senses and jumped back, his face all red. What the did I just do? Aaah what were you thinking kissing her like that Naruto? He screamed to himself. Then a random thought of what would have it felt like if he had kissed her on the lips entered his mind and made his face even redder. Naruto shook his head violently to throw out any such thoughts. Bad Naruto. Bad. You can't kiss her without her consent. Damned Arrow Senen is rubbing off on me. Then Naruto took some deep breaths to calm himself. All right. Must ask her out after she wakes up and confess everything to her, the blonde thought to himself. He then again went to her side and rubbed her hand with his. Get well soon Hinata-chan. He almost whispered to her and then left. Inside his mindscape, Minato, Kashina and Kurama had thoroughly enjoyed the whole scene. They were quite pleased with Naruto being so considerate and affectionate towards Hinata. Minato and Kashina had already chosen her as their daughter-in-law. Unlike Naruto they had no reservations about Hinata ever rejecting their son because of his burden and quite rightly so. That night Hinata stirred him for the first time since being hospitalized. Chapter 7, Some More Training in A. Confession, 3. It had been three days since Naruto had visited Hinata in the hospital. After seeing her, Naruto had a new goal in his mind, I will protect Hinata forever, no matter what. With renewed vigor he got back to the Rasengan training. He also increased his efforts during his Taijutsu training with Gai. Impressed with Naruto's determination, Gai increased their morning training sessions by an hour. He had also introduced Naruto to the weights he and Lee used. In the beginning, Naruto had put 15 pounds weights in legs as well as arms. The spandex wearing Junin and his new student were now doing 40 laps around the village and 180 sets of push-ups. Guy was quite proud to have got the chance to train another, genius of hard work, likely in himself. The training with Jiraiya was also going smoothly. As promised, Jiraiya had introduced Naruto to another jutsu, the Taiju Cage Shuriken no Jutsu, Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu. The blonde was able to create 20 copies of his shuriken on his first try and had been able to increase the number to 40 within the two days that passed. Currently Naruto was standing in the training ground number 7 with Jiraiya looking at the three training dummies 150 meters in front of him. Shadow clone jutsu, Naruto exclaimed, making his signature hand sign and two clones appeared. Taking a single shuriken in his hand, the jinchuriki threw it towards the training dummy with an accurate aim and quickly went through the hand signs. Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu, he exclaimed. At the same time, his clones went through another set of hand signs, wind style, great breakthrough, exclaimed the clones at the same time, letting out a powerful gust of wind out of their mouths while the shuriken multiplied into 45 copies of itself. The shuriken moved at binding speeds and impaled themselves into the dummies. Jiraiya was quite impressed. Well done, Naruto. That was a good combination attack with your clones. If you increase the speed of your shuriken like that, your opponents will have a hard time dodging them. A. Hey, thanks, Aero Senen, when I get the number of copies to more than 100, they won't know what hit them, said Naruto excited. He then continued to practice the move several times. In the meantime, his clones were able to complete the leaf cutting exercise, much to his joy. The blonde found out that practicing the leaf cutting exercise had increased the force of his, wind style, great breakthrough. He was itching to learn some other wind jutsus. As far as the Rasengan training was concerned, Naruto was able to burst the rubber ball two days after visiting Hinata. He then moved to the third phase, i.e. rotating chakra in the water balloon without bursting it. He had to admit that the third phase was the most difficult one so far. Meanwhile Kurama had also started his training with the chakra cloak. As the two were already cooperating well with each other, the only barrier was the extent to which Naruto's 13 years old body could sustain Kurama's power without suffering any physical damage. Jiraiya leaving for his peeping. Air, research, was a blessing for Naruto and the occupants of his head. Whenever the Toad Sage would leave for his research, Naruto would begin his training with Kurama. The training began a week after Naruto had met his parents, 21 days till the finals. 
On the first day of the training itself, Naruto was able effortlessly master the version 1 chakra cloak, he was able to last a good 30 minutes with three tails. For the time being, Naruto's parents and Kurama had decided that this much was enough for the Chunin exams and further training can be done afterwards. Of course, they had taken the additional problems into consideration. So, Naruto kept practicing with the version 1-3 tailed cloak and tried to increase his time limit with the same. He found that his jutsus such as the Great Breakthrough were significantly amplified when he used the Chakra Cloak and his speed increased significantly as well. Now it was 15 days till the finals, Naruto was returning home from another training session with Jiraiya, he caught sight of Yuhi Kurenai walking down the street. Kurenai sensei seems quite close to Hinata-chan. Since that day, I haven't visited Hinata-chan yet. Maybe Kurenai sensei can tell me how she's doing. Thinking this to himself, Naruto approached the red-eyed genjutsu mistress. Good afternoon Kurenai sensei. He greeted her with a slight bow which took the janin by surprise. Who taught him manners? The last time I checked, he never greeted even his own sensei so respectfully, Kurenai thought to herself. Hello Naruto, how are your preparations for the finals going? They are going well sensei. I am working day and night for this one. Just watch me in the finals. Well, I know you are a hard worker and I am sure you'll give a great performance in the finals. Anyways, is there anything you wanted to ask me? Hi. I wanted to know how is Hinata-chan doing and when can I visit her? Naruto asked, I definitely won't tell you that I have already snuck into her room once and will do it again tonight or tomorrow, he thought to himself. I didn't really think that the way Hinata was hurt would affect him this much, has he finally started notice her. Well, if he did, then I might as well help these two out a little bit. The Genjutsu mistress thought, the doctors have said that she might regain consciousness anytime within the next 10 days. 10 days huh, said the blonde with a contemplating look. Okay then, thanks for the information, Kurenai sensei, I will be on my way then, see you later. Naruto then gave her a quick bow and left. Training or no training, he certainly learned some manners. The red-eyed Jonin thought to herself. Meanwhile, Naruto was walking towards his apartment, when he suddenly felt something, like something was off, a slight repelling sensation into his own amazement, he could assign a direction to that sensation. When he turned towards the direction from which he was getting this strange feeling the most, he saw a fat restaurant owner throwing water on a stray dog. The dog got scared and ran away with the owner mumbling something about stupid good-for-nothing animals. Naruto shuddered. He could remember that he himself was many times at the receiving end of such treatment. They see me as some unwanted stray dog, not even a human. Even though I understand the reason now, it still hurts. Naruto thought to himself. Suddenly another thought hit him. Wait a minute, I was actually able to sense something, something repelling, something repelling from that man even before he threw water at the dog. It's as if, as if I could. It's as if you could sense his disdain towards that dog, isn't it Naruto? Asked Kurama from inside his mindscape. Well, yeah, that's exactly how I would put it Kurama, like I could sense his disdain. Naruto replied in the mindscape. That's because of my ability of sensing negative emotions. I told you earlier that all biju have some special abilities. Negative emotion sensing happens to be one of my unique abilities. After opening the seal and gaining access to all of my chakra, all my special abilities are now your abilities as well. Wow, that's great but, couldn't you have some cooler special ability like the Sharingan, the Byakugan or, something like that. You sound like that Uchiha teammate of yours complaining about what you don't have while forgetting what you have. That kind of attitude needs to change. Kurama. Skell. A. No offense Kurama, just got a little carried away. Please don't mind, Naruto replied. Very well, now back to the topic, meditation can help increase your concentration and that will increase your perception range. The ability will be amplified when you access my chakra. It's not that hard and I bet by the time the exams will end, you will be able to sense negative emotions anywhere in this village when on guard. Even when off guard you will be able to sense those emotions in enough time to prevent a sneak attack. Guess what, nobody can get you by surprise now even when off guard. Now tell me if that's not impressive. Kurama asked. Naruto could only agree that such an ability was certainly impressive. However, he needed almost 15 days of practice perfect it. Well, just enough time for the exams. 14 days passed by. The training experience Naruto had could be described as one of the best any shinobi could dream and why not. He was trained by Asani, the Yandaimi Hokage, Kashina Uzumaki, who was rather called Crimson Death, in the bingo books of Kumo and Iwa, the strongest biju and perhaps the strongest taijutsu specialist in all elemental nations and all his trainers were quite pleased with the amount of progress he had made. 
They were all sure that one certain Hyuga obsessed with fate was in for a rather rude awakening. In the meantime, Naruto had visited his unconscious love thrice at nights and spent minimum 2-3 hours sitting by her side, holding hands. He had to admit that being near Hinata, he felt the same warmth that he felt when he was with his parents. In the mornings, nobody could find out who had left flowers by her bed which were clearly not there before. With Guy, Naruto had visited Lee once as well. Kanahageker General Hospital, two nights before the finals. Naruto had gotten word from Kurenai in the afternoon that Hinata had regained consciousness. He immediately rushed to the hospital, only to be rudely turned away by the receptionist as well as two Hayuga elders who just had to be there at the moment. They said, my kind, are not allowed to be associated with the great Hayugas as I will corrupt them. Naruto was a little distressed. He was quite used to insults and name callings but a small part of his mind was very afraid that Hinata might also think about him in the same way much of her clan did once she got to know of his secrets. He was very afraid that his love might be rejected and even with his parents being there he knew he would be totally devastated if it happened. I just hope she accepts me, I don't know what I will do if she doesn't. But she deserves to know who I am in reality. Naruto thought as he made his way towards the hospital. Naru-chan, she will accept you no matter what you don't have to worry about anything. His mother reassured him from the mindscape perhaps for the 15th time. Ever since he had gotten word of Hinata regaining consciousness the blonde had been a nervous mess. He couldn't focus on anything. He desperately wanted to talk to the shy Hayuga, confess to her and tell her his truth. But he was so nervous that he had almost turned back several times. The 15 minutes walk to the hospital had taken him more than an hour this time. When he reached the hospital, he found that the window to Hinata's room was open. He began pacing back and forth. Gaki just get it over with, said Kurama from the mindscape. His parents gave him the best reassuring smile they could. Okay, okay, I am going, I am going. The Jinchuriki then transformed into a nurse and quietly stepped into the hospital. He had made sure to put on a surgical mask so as to not raise suspicion. At night it was the easiest way to sneak around the hospital. In minutes, he was before her room. He glanced around and to his relief no one was there. He knew that the Hayuga despised Hinata, so if anyone from the clan was around his negative emotion sensing would go off but so far there was nothing. So, he took a deep breath and without making a sound, opened the door and closed it as quietly. She seemed to be asleep. Releasing the henge, he quietly made his way to her and sat down on the stool. This time, he was too nervous to touch her hand. So, he just decided to keep looking at her. He then saw that she had a pained expression on her face. A nightmare. She then tried to hug herself in sleep and trembled. Naruto got worried. Then he heard her mumbling something, something that shook him to the core. And no I won't be taken away from Naruto-kun, she mumbled. Naruto's eyes widened. She's dreaming about me, me. Then he saw her crying even in sleep. I I don't care if you put the caged bird seal on me, I I will still love Naruto-kun. I I I don't care if he has the Kyubi inside him, I I still love him, she mumbled again. Naruto froze, completely and utterly froze. His mind raced through thousands of thoughts at the speed of light and then for some moments it totally shut down. Even Minato, Kashina and Kurama were totally shocked. None of them had imagined that this shy girl could know about Naruto being a Jinchuriki. As soon as their shock faded away, they couldn't help feel proud of her, very proud of her. Naruto on the other hand, he was having tears in his eyes as he came to terms with what he got to know about Hinata in some seconds. She knows, she already knows, and she has already accepted me, what was I thinking, all this time, all this time, and she, she loves me, she loves me. No kidding, you needed to hear it from her mouth to realize it. Any doubt he still had about the Hyuga princess and what he felt about her faded away at that very instant and him loving her was now as clear as the sun rising in the east. Naruto leaned towards her, put his head on her chest and carefully wrapped his arms around her. I love you too Hinata-chan. He said in a slow voice as he embraced her. Fortunately, or unfortunately depending entirely on your point of view, either the sudden contact or the intensity of the dream, awakened Hinata. And she woke up she felt a weight on her body and looking down, she saw the boy of her dreams right there, embraced into her chest. Immediately her face wore a never before seen shed of red. She was too frozen in shock to even faint, then she heard something she had only dreamed about till then. I love you, Naruto quietly said, unaware that she was already awakened. The words broke her out of the stupor. It's a dream, it's another dream, Naruto-kun can't be here hugging me saying that he loves me. It has to be a dream, only if it were real. She then slowly moved her hand to his head. This immediately snapped his head up and he looked at her wide-eyed. I wish it was not a dream Naruto-kun. 
I really love you, she said just as she felt a bit of pain while speaking. So, if it was a dream, why was she feeling the pain while speaking? Naruto took hold of her hand that was over his head and looked at her teary-eyed. It's not a dream Hinata-chan, I am sorry that I didn't realize it sooner but I do love you. I really do, Hinata immediately fainted, that took longer than I expected it would. 